Again, and welcome to this episode of Learn Everyday English, your roadway to English proficiency. Again, glad to have you with me today. Uh, my name's Gary. For those of you who don't know me, live in a small town in uh, Texas, United States, about one hour north of Houston, and um, got another episode for you today about how I became fluent in Spanish at age 62. My story, story, mi historia. So I'm going to tell you how I learned Spanish. And uh, it's kind of a long story, a little bit involved, um, a lot of uh, turns and twists, we can say in English. Uh, I made uh, some mistakes, or I kind of may have made a lot of mistakes. If I had to do it all over again, I would do it differently. So I have a lot of maybe advice and tips I'm going to be uh, giving you, uh, things I've learned and uh, maybe some words of wisdom I can pass on to you, I can pass on to you. But before we get into that, you know, there's three things you can do for me. Hey, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and three, tell your friends about it so that they can benefit from these videos too, just like you. And uh, before I get into the meat of the matter or the uh, details, uh, just to let you know I'm still working on my uh, how, to, how to Talk Text and e-book. I'm almost finished with that and hopefully maybe next week I can uh, upload it to Amazon. It may take about a week to get it uh, through their system. So hopefully still by the end of uh, this month, end of October, it will be available, so I will uh, be keeping you updated on the status of that project. And if you're interested in learning more words and phrases about uh, how we talk here in Texas, I think that'll be a good resource for you and a source of information. So let's jump into uh, this program, how I became fluent in Spanish at age 62. And I guess the thing is, uh, one big question is, and maybe something that needs to be defined, is uh, what is fluent or what is fluency? Because there seems to be a lot of uh, debate out there uh, as far as what it means to be fluent. And I've heard a lot of different things. Some people say, well, if you're at a B1, B2 level, some people say maybe B2, C1 level of Spanish or, or language, a foreign language, or if you can carry on a conversation, you feel comfortable talking about most uh, topics in general, and, you know, that's uh, fluency, and, but that doesn't mean you're perfect, that doesn't mean you're going to speak like a native, or you're not going to make any mistakes, so that's kind of key. So just to let you know, I feel comfortable talking with uh, anybody in Spanish about uh, any topic, but uh, I still make mistakes. Sometimes I make a lot of mistakes, especially if, you know, I have to talk about technical topics or maybe politics because there's still a lot of words, phrases, vocabulary that just take a while to learn, that just take a while to learn. But uh, so I consider myself fluent, but let's get into how I got to this point. So the first... Uh, area of my Spanish language journey began in high school, like so many people here in the United States, or when I've talked to people in other countries that had the same experience in other countries. I went to a private Catholic high school, and there all the students had to study a foreign language for four years, so I chose Spanish. And I did that because, you know, living in Texas, uh, you're close to Mexico, seemed to make sense. And I always had an interest in learning Spanish, and I could say I really enjoyed the four years, but sadly I didn't really learn a whole lot because it was mainly learning, uh, you know, verb conjugations, reading out of a textbook, really never learned how to speak or understand. So after four years of high school, 
I couldn't really carry on a conversation. I couldn't understand uh, very well what Spanish people were speaking. So uh, overall, I think it was kind of just a, a waste of time in a certain aspect. So going, continuing on to my next uh, uh, part of the story in Spanish, I graduated high school, went on to college, went to the University of Houston, and I went to study engineering. And I did uh, take, I think, two semesters of Spanish, but mainly it was just a review. I took uh, Spanish level courses that were the same uh, information I learned in high school. Basically, I did that so I could have an easy A, we say here in the United States, an easy A. I knew I could probably get A's in the class, in the classes, and I did. So I didn't really learn anything new. And then I went to college after that. I graduated from college and uh, started working at the city of Houston as an engineer. It was, life was very busy and I uh, worked there for a while, eventually got married and as we say in English, life got in the way. So I didn't study any Spanish uh, for a long time until after actually I, I uh, retired from the city of Houston. And after working 30 years, I retired from the city of Houston in 2015. But I didn't immediately start uh, trying to learn Spanish. So I retired in 2015. But I started studying Spanish uh, in 2018, 2018, because I had more free time. And I thought, well, you know, I learned Spanish in high school. I'd really like to... Um, you know, learn Spanish again. I had gotten remarried. My wife, current wife, is Hispanic, Mexican American, so she speaks Spanish. And her, you know, mother and family, a lot of the Spanish, her family speaks Spanish. So I thought it would be a good, uh, you know, overall. And I still was interested in Spanish culture, the Spanish language. So we say all the planets aligned. And I decided to um, begin my Spanish journey in 2018 at the age of, uh, let's see, 56, at the age of 56. So I say this, say that to say this, you're never too old to start learning Spanish. And I basically had to start all over again from zero because I'd forgotten everything I'd learned in high school those many years ago. So what I did, the first uh, three semesters, there's a university here in my town, Sam Houston State University. So for three semesters, one, e one semester each, I took one class. So one semester I took a class. The next semester I took a second class. Third semester I took a third class, kind of just as a, uh, we say, uh, auditing the class. I didn't get a grade. And basically it was just a review of everything, you know, I, I'd learned way back then, we say in English, way back then in high school. So for the first basically year and a half, that's all I did. I just went to class because I was still stuck in the same old mindset, we say, the same old mindset that in order to learn a language, I had to go to school, I had to go to class, and that was my first error. I hadn't heard anything about comprehensible input. I didn't know anything differently. So for a first year and a half, that's all I did. I didn't try to speak. I didn't try to listen to anything, just go to class. And so basically, yeah, the first two after these three semesters, I didn't really do a whole lot either. May have um, read a few books, but the first two years, basically, uh, looking back on it now, um, I don't say was useless because I did relearn a lot of grammar, but I could have made uh, better strides, we say in English. I could have improved a lot faster if I would have started doing other things. And then I remember during this time, my wife would always tell me, hey, you need to start speaking. You need to start speaking. But I always felt I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I, f I felt, hey, I don't know all the verb conjugations well enough. I don't I'm not really that clear enough on the, ver the difference between ser y estar y por y para y el supuntivo. I need to make sure I understand that better before I start speaking with other people. And that was a mistake I made. So learn from me. 
But then I guess after the two years in, say two years in to studying Spanish, I said, well, let me just, uh, I'm gonna, while I'm driving my car, I'm going to put the radio on a Spanish uh, radio station and just listen to the sound of Spanish. I couldn't understand anything at all, zero. But I said, well, I'm going to get accustomed to the sound, the tone, the rhythm of the language. So a lot of times when I would be driving, I'd just be listening to a Spanish radio station, not understanding anything. But then in um, 2020, um, I started, I uh, found out about a, uh, a website, 2020-2021, uh, called Conversation Exchange, where you can uh, make contact with people who are trying to learn another language, and you can have an uh, interchange of, or exchange of languages where they help you learn uh, their language, and you help them learn your language. So I met a gentleman in Mexico City by the name of Arturo, and he was really interested in improving his English, and I was in interested in improving my Spanish. So we agreed to meet uh, once a week, one time a week, for one hour, I remember, on Sunday mornings, for and we would talk in English for 30 minutes and Spanish for 30 minutes. So I met with Arturo, or Arturo, for uh, over a year, more than a year, but that was all I did. I just spoke with him uh, one time a week. I didn't speak with anybody else. So as you can see, my Spanish language journey was very slow, very slow. I didn't really know what to do. The problem is I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a plan. But it was, it was helpful. I remember those first... Uh, weeks and months with Arturo, it was very frustrating because I, my vocabulary wasn't big. I wasn't used to speaking. I would make a lot of pauses, uh, uh, trying to think what I wanted to say, how I wanted to say it. But it was very good, and it was a good practice for me. But eventually, I began to listen more and more. I uh, learned about podcasts, podcasts, and I started to listen to a lot of podcasts and uh, started, started watching some YouTube videos. But I have to say, uh, I came across a podcast, uh, Spanish Land School, and that really helped me out because they have had an uh, online kind of language learning program called the Parcero, Parcero Program, and I signed up for that, and I did that for a year, year and a half. I could say that really helped me. I'm not getting paid by Spanish Land School to... Um, tell you about that, but it uh, got me more motivated, gave me structure in my Spanish language journey, and I began learning a lot more about Spanish and grammar and that type of thing. I was talking with Arturo, so I was uh, really enjoying it a lot. And then uh, what really helped me out a lot, maybe three and a half years in, I found out about a, another program called Baselang, Baselang. And uh, there you can sign up for just a monthly fee, and you can have unlimited conversations with people. And I did that for, I think, about six months or so, and that really helped me out a lot. That really helped me out. And I was talking maybe at least twice a day for maybe four or five times a week with different people from Venezuela, Argentina, Colombia, Peru. And, um, and it got me accustomed to speaking about myself because I was having to introduce myself to different teachers. So I was kind of going over the same information over and over again, but I got accustomed. I got used to talking about myself and uh, the same information, and I became very comfortable doing that. And then after that, uh, I met a current italki teacher, Victor, Victor, lives in Mexico City, and he was a graduate of UNAM, the uh, Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, and they had some, an online program called uh, the CEPE, C-E-P-E, -E, Centro de Enseñanza para Extranjeros, and I took like uh, three semesters of online classes from them. And uh, it was very good practice because all the classes were totally, totalmente en español, totally in, es in Spanish. 
And uh, it wasn't uh, a lot of conversation, but I got used to hearing the Spanish all the time in a kind of college educational setting. At first, I was very nervous. I was like, I'm going to have to take a class all in Spanish with no English. But uh, I got used to that, and it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. And that even started lifting up my Spanish ability as well. And then I have a health problem, as you all know, and we went to, on a vacation to Mexico City two years ago. And uh, there I decided I wanted to maybe meet with a doctor there in Mexico City. And what I did, I was able to actually make a telephone conversation, several conversations to the doctor and doctor's office in Spanish and uh, talk to people there over the phone, which is a lot more difficult usually than talking with somebody face to face or cara a cara. But uh, so gradually I started, uh, my Spanish just started to improve, improve. And, but I say about three years ago, after I had been studying Spanish for three years, three years ago in 2019, I started to take Spanish more seriously. And I started to try to do something every day, even if it was just for 20, 30 minutes or maybe an hour. I would either try to listen to some podcasts, I would watch videos on YouTube, maybe read a book or books in Spanish. So I found that that was very key once I decided to make the commitment to, to do something consistently and be persistent about it, have a goal. And I set goals like, hey, I want to be able to watch a Spanish movie or I want to be able to try and watch a Spanish movie with the Spanish subtitles without stopping. You know, or eventually now I have a goal of trying to watch a Spanish movie without subtitles, which I'm still working on. But uh, I set some goals. I didn't meet those, but that's fine. But I think that's important to have a plan. Set some goals. Hey, do something consistently. You need to do something every day. I found those things are very key. And once I started doing that three years ago, my Spanish started to, say, take off. It started to improve. And now, basically, I don't study grammar. I just watch, uh, listen to podcasts. I just watch a whole lot of YouTube videos. I'm a YouTube junkie. But I find, for me, listening, listening, listening is the key, and I've mentioned that before. But also, right now, I take a, um, a group conversation class with a great teacher from Spain, Spanish with Carmen. We have a group conversation class every Tuesday for an hour and a half. It's good because we have an uh, article we have to read. Then we have to comment about it, talk about it, give our perspective. And we have to write a little, uh, we call it a resume, like a summary of what we read, the author's intent. So that really keeps me motivated. I recently signed up to, for the Worlds Across Spanish. It's a website where I can pay uh, like a one fixed amount of money a month. I get up to I think 10 one-on-one -on -one conversation classes a month and unlimited group classes. And then I still speak with my uh, friend and I talking teacher Victor in Mexico City once a week. So my goal right now is to just um, improve my conversation ability, improve my conversation ability. So that's kind of what I, I did and what I'm doing right now uh, and how I became, say, fluent. But I could say probably about mm, two years ago, year and a half ago, I think I kind of crossed that plateau where I really felt comfortable talking to pretty much anybody about any subject totally in Spanish. And um, so I'd say, like I said, the first two years, two and a half years, I didn't really do much. I wasted a lot of time. So for me, it's hard to say how long I've really been studying Spanish. Seriously, I've been studying Spanish, like I said, for six years. But out of those six years, uh, a lot of it wasn't very serious. And I know a lot of people have the same issue. So I want to let you know there's 10 things I learned or say insights, insights that I have, things that I've learned that I want to offer or tell you. So the first thing, like I said, I wasted a lot, a lot of time by not having a plan, by not having a plan. So 
the uh, insight that I want to give you is you need a plan. You need to have a plan of action. How are you going to go about studying your English? What is your goal? Where do you want to see yourself in a year, two years? And to have a road map, map that out, we say in English. That's number one. The second thing I learned was that I should have started speaking earlier or sooner. So my recommendation to you is start speaking sooner. Even at a beginner level, I think it's, it's helpful to be able to start speaking. Maybe you can do something called crosstalk where you speak in your uh, native language and the other person speaks in the language that you want to learn, but at least you're getting some uh, auditory comprehension. That's a good way to start. Or start by just describing a picture or something like that. But just get used to speaking. That's the second thing. The third thing I learned is learning a new language takes a lot of work, and it took longer than I thought. And for me, especially when you're older, it seems like uh, I just don't learn as fast as somebody, say, in their teens, a teenager in their 20s. Or maybe it's just me, but that's my experience. But I thought maybe, hey, after about two years, I'll be able to speak Spanish fluently with no problem. And I realized that wasn't the case. And from what I've seen, most people, it takes two, a lot of times three years before people are really comfortable enough to maybe be considered fluent to have conversations with anybody and feeling comfortable about it. So, it, and it took a lot more work than I thought it would, a lot more dedication, a lot more time. And that's why, you know, a lot of people start learning a foreign language, but the majority of people quit. Majority of people don't stick with it because it's, it's too hard or they realize it's more work than they thought it was going to be. It's not as easy. They don't want to put in the time and the effort. So what I learned is it takes more work and it takes longer than you may think. That's why a lot of people give up. The next thing I learned is co comprehensible input for me is and was key. Comprehensible input, especially just listening to podcasts and YouTube videos. I found that neat. That was a very beneficial. So you need to absorb the language like a child does over time. And that's the key. It's, it's a gradual process because you, you have to learn a lot of new words. You have to become familiar with new words and phrases so that when you hear the word and phrase, your mind automatically knows what it means without you having to try to translate. So in order to be able to get to that level, you have to just be able to input, take in all this information and hear it over and over and over again until it just becomes second nature to you. The next thing I learned is that it seems to be harder to learn a language when you're older compared to someone in their teens. I said, mentioned that before, but the takeaway from that, the thing I learned is that this is not a roadblock and it shouldn't keep someone from learning. So if you're an older person, like I was in their 50s or even 60s or 70s, hey, it's never too late. You can do it. Si se puede, as they say in Spanish. You can do it. So don't give up. Don't think you're too old because they say, I think learning a new language is good for the brain. Hopefully it's, uh, some tests show that it may help to, uh, to stem off or push back the onset of Alzheimer's or dementia. So, and it's just good for the brain. Next thing I mentioned before, but I learned was fluent doesn't mean you speak perfectly or you don't make any mistakes. Like I said, I'm comfortable talking to people about any topic, although sometimes, you know, the limit vocabulary can still be an issue. But uh, the thing to take away from that and you can learn is don't get caught up in the word fluent. You know, people debate about that. Who's fluent? Uh, what's fluent? Are you fluent? Am I fluent? Is she, he fluent? Hey, don't worry about that. You know, just, uh, just work on yourself and just keep improving your English and how you speak English. And uh, three things that I found is very key is it's important to be consistent, persistent, and to me, just have fun. Have fun like enjoy the journey. This is a key thing for me. You know, don't be in such a rush. 
The next thing I learned is try to find videos in your language, for me it was Spanish, about subjects that you are interested in. I like to watch videos about people who talking about their culture, their country. I like to learn about cultures and country. I, I like watch videos in Spanish about people that are traveling around the world to different countries and what they're experiencing. I like to watch videos. I like um, music, how to play different instruments or photography. I watch videos about those subjects in Spanish. So find uh, what you're interested in and watch videos in English about those topics. This will make it more enjoyable and not seem like work. It'll be fun. The next thing I learned is don't compare yourself with others. Don't compare yourself with others. You're not in a competition with anybody. So a lot of times we'll see these videos that say I learned Spanish or English in three months or six months. I don't like those titles. I don't like those videos because to me, one, it's not realistic and it's not fair. It gives people like you and me kind of a false impression, maybe a false hope. Hey, you can... if learn a foreign language very fast and what happens if if you don't learn it in three months or six months you feel like maybe hey I'm not as smart as these other people I'm not as good I can't do it and people give up hey but don't compare yourself with others um, you're not in a competition and the last thing I learned is and I mentioned this before don't be in a rush don't be in a rush enjoy the journey we say enjoy the process enjoy the experience you know take each day as it comes and just have fun so that, that's how I became uh, fluent in Spanish at age 62 but the things I would change is I would uh, definitely try to begin uh, speaking uh, a lot sooner almost from the beginning I would also not spend as much time focusing on grammar although I do think grammar is important but um, I think I would have started listening to podcasts and watching videos from the very beginning and speaking from the beginning. I could have become more fluent uh, probably at least two years sooner. But hey, you know, that's my life. That's my story. And like I said, uh, you're never too old. You can do it. So hopefully you've uh, learned a few things from this video. There's some things that you can take away from it. We say you can take away with you and um, start utilizing in your own uh, language journey. Say, so let me know uh, what you th thought about the video. Are these some of the same things you've learned on your English language journey? Or what maybe other things that you have learned that I didn't mention that may be helpful for me or helpful for other people? on this channel. Hey, let me know. Drop it in the comments below. So again, hey, um, thanks for watching this episode of Learn Everyday English, and we'll talk to you later. Hey, goodbye.